Hello YouTube, what's up? And in this tutorial, we're going to be starting a C++ tutorial. We will be um, showing you how to install the compiler and IDE Eclipse and the required, uh, you know, GNU compiler. So, you're going to need uh, MinGW, link will be in the description, and you're going to click download and let it download through Chrome. Then you're going to need the Eclipse IDE for C slash C++ developers and link for this will also be in the description and if you have Windows 32 bit select this if you have Windows 64 bit like me I recommend that you have a 64 bit OS go ahead click here and click the download link now um this should find the closest download download link to you if it doesn't scroll down here you have all the mirrors so once you get those downloaded go ahead and set them on the desktop exit out of your browser Oh, and just a warning, Eclipse needs the Java runtime um, in order to function, so make sure you have that downloaded. I suggest Java 7, get the latest version, 64-bit, for 64-bit OS. So we're going to install uh, MingJW, just double-click, click Run. Go ahead, click Next. Click Next. Make sure you get the latest repository from the catalog. Accept the agreement. Install it to the default folder. Next. Now, here's where I suggest that you install the full system. Just because as other compilers, for example, the Fortran is an object and ADA, ADA. Um, but you know. Also get the developer toolkit and the basic system. Click next, click install, and it'll download the latest and install. It's gonna update the catalog. Once this is finished, we're going to have to edit our environmental variables, and it's gonna be the environmental path that that points to our compiler, being GW. I'm just gonna wait for this. It's basically downloading the catalogs from the repository to get the latest version. Now, before we let this finish, let's go ahead and click Start. Right click on Computer, select Properties. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have to edit the environmental variables. So, let me move this out of this way just so we can see when this is done. And you're going to have to go to Advanced System Settings. And go, you'll see right here it says Environmental Variables. And we'll cover that as soon as this is done. But until then, let me move this out of the way so you can see what's going on. It may take a while to download, um, depending on your internet speed. So, there you go. Also, we have to edit the environmental variable after it's done downloading and installing. So, this may take a while. I may end up may end up cutting the footage, and if I'll do, I'll let you guys know. Okay, so now that MingGW is done, you can display the log, which we don't want. We know it finished. So go ahead, click finish. Now back to the system properties. Go ahead and select environmental variables, and look for the path variable. And we'll probably be looking for the one down here. There it is. Now go ahead, and click edit, and you can see that there's some stuff in there already. Actually, a lot of stuff. Now I have a file on the desktop with the environment path which we need. It's C, MingGW, bin, and then you add a semicolon and then you have MingGW isis 1.0 bin so go ahead and copy that control c and paste it in there also it needs to go in the beginning and make sure you have the semicolon separating different programs Let's see go ahead click ok 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 now 
I'll add this into the link. I'll add this into the description of the video. Next, we need to install Eclipse. Um, I have 7-zip, but any, including any zip program, WinZip, 7-zip, uh, WinRAR, um, even Windows own zip program will work. Now, inside here will be an Eclipse folder. Go ahead, and if you're on a 64-bit computer, you want it in the program files. It will not go in the x86 folder. If you're on a 32-bit computer, x86 will not exist, and you also select program files. And go ahead and copy this to there. Now, once you're done copying, we're going to need to make a shortcut on the desktop. Now, it shouldn't take that long, but just a uh, fair warning, it's fairly big size. 143 megabytes. So, it may also take a long time to download. It took me about 20 minutes. Then that depends on the mirror that you select to download and how the mirror's speed is. <coughs> Make sure you provide administrator privileges to copy to the program files folder. And it's probably going to take a while. Okay, so it's done copying. You can exit out of your zip program or Windows zip. Double click, double click on Eclipse, and you'll see the Eclipse.exe application file. Right click on it, click Send to Desktop, Create Shortcut, and there you go. There's your Eclipse shortcut. Now we have finished setting up Eclipse. So you can go ahead and delete the MGW and the zip folder and you can go ahead and run Eclipse. Now make sure you have the Java JRE 64-bit installed if you're on a 64-bit computer or Java JRE 32-bit if you're on a 32-bit computer. Links to those will be provided in the description. And this is basically episode 1 of how to set up your um, environment. Sorry about that, I was deleting folders. Um, so, never mind. let's get to the workspace. Now, you can select where to have the workspace. I just do it under your username. And you can use this as a default. Now, we're going to go ahead and select that just because it will save everything in one place. Go ahead, click that checkbox, and click OK. Now, it's going to take a while to load, probably, if this is the first time. After that, it shouldn't take as long, but it'll still be pretty lengthy. Now this is an IDE, it's basically a front end, and here we go, Programs opening. Eclipse is opening up. Now what we want to do is, oh we got a message. Okay, that's for configuring Git. We'll do that later. You need a home environment. Just click OK. And now we're here. Now, they have these things for what's new, but they also have tutorials. So, that can be very helpful. 